Yu Xing, are you ready to go? Yes. All right. Our last speaker of the day and our last speaker of the conference, whoops, is Yu Shang Shi, and he will talk on Kudal Rapoport conjectures over the ramified primes. And off you go. Take it away. Thank you, Jim. And uh, thank you. For, uh, thank all the organizers for the invitation. And it's a great honor to be the last speaker in the conference. So um, Luis mentioned that he carried a paper of Steve in the grad school all around for some time. And uh, I have I had the same experience. So uh, the difference is that I can carry three papers of Steve. So the first one is uh, uh, the Kula Milson one, uh, which is a 1991 IHES paper. So that's uh, my thesis topic. And the other two are the Kula Rokopor ones. So the, the, the Kula Rokopor papers about uh, special cycles on unitary varieties. And uh, I also learned um, a lot from his notes um, in locals, um, local state correspondence and a lot of other papers. So those are very well written. Um, uh, I learned a lot from them. I first met Steve in, um, three years ago, I guess, um, um, on Kula's 70th birthday conference in Germany. So, sorry, it's so, um, Rappaport's 70th birthday conference in, Germ in Germany. So I would like to thank Michael Rappaport for bringing me there. And uh, so I, I hope uh, I, um, I asked Steve some questions and he explained to me very patiently. So I hope I can come up with better questions to ask him next time. And I wish Steve stay healthy, uh, stay energetic and stay productive for indefinitely long. So uh, that's beginning my talk. So, um, so the talk is um, joint work with uh, and Chao He and uh, Tong Hai Yao. And uh, so uh, the talk will be divided into three parts. The first part, I will briefly reveal um, the Kula Ripple conjecture and the good, good reduction case, namely on ramified primes and uh, principal polarization. And the second part of the talk, I will um, go over some basic facts about a unitary Rapoport zinc spaces over ramified primes. And uh, talk about our conjecture, uh, our modified KR conjecture in this case. And um, in the last part of the talk, I will talk about some evidence of the conjecture. Namely, I will talk about proofs for it and n equals one, two, and three. Okay. So in this talk, I will assume that P is an odd prime. And uh, f over qp is a quadratic extension, and pi is a uniform lighter of f. And if, at the beginning of the talk, I assumed that the, the extension is unramified, uh, but later I will uh, switch to ramified situation. So f, f hat is a completion of the maximal unramified extension of f. And uh, to define the unitary RZ space, I need a framing object. So the framing object is as follows. So X is a super singular P digital group over um, FP bar, the algebraic closure of FP. And uh, iota X is um, an action of OF on X, uh, which satisfies the Kotwitz um, signature condition of N minus one one. So we have already seen this in uh, several times, I guess, in, the, in this conference in Way's talk, uh, for example. And uh, so here phi is, a Phi of Verfi is the structural homomorphism, should be OF to S. So it's a typo here. So, and uh, lambda X is a principal polarization whose row side involution restricting on OF is a Galois complication. So, um, the, the Rappaport zinc space uh, in this context is a modulized space that classifies the following quadruples. So X is a super singular um, P digital group over S. So here S is over a spiff of OF hat. And uh, IOTA is um, an, an action that satisfies the same signature condition uh, that I wrote in the previous slide. And the lambda is a, pre, uh, is a principal polarization, which also satisfies the same condition as in the previous slide, namely the Rosati involution um, res uh, with respect to it is um, 
the complex uh, is a con uh, Galois conjugation when restricted on all f. And uh, the uh, the last um, the last object is rho, which is a framing map. So it is an OF linear quasi isogeny um, from X to our framing object X, defining the previous slide. So this is to get rid of self automorphism so, so that the moduli functor is uh, representable by a formal scheme. Okay. So uh, why uh, so um, why is R, R D space interested? So it is um, um, it has a periodic uniformization of uh, rubbed point in zinc. So um, so um, so the completion of the Unifushimura variety uh, along its super singular locus in characteristic P can be uniformized um, by the RD space. So uh, the right hand side of this equation is um, this, this RD space then quotient by some discrete uh, subgroup you know, with respect to the periodic topology. Okay, this is an analog of the complex uniformization of uh, Shimura variety. So this is um, this is different with uh, um, uh, the, the uniformization theorem that uh, Michael Rappaport talked about this morning. So this is only for the super singular locus. So this uh, is a bit different. Now uh, to define a special cycle, um, uh, we need to fix an object Y. So Y is the framing object for the dimension one case. So it is uh, the um, super singular p divisible group. In other words, the underlying p, p divisible group of a super singular elliptic curve. And uh, we, um, so it has a compatible um, OF action and uh, uh, principal polarization. So it has a uni uh, universal deformation, which is a canonical lifting in the sense of growth. And uh, we define this vector space, which is um, um, a set of quasi homomorphism from Y to X. Uh, we require this set to be OF linear. Um, and uh, then it is actually isomorphic to F to the nth power. So on V, we have a Hermitian form defined by uh, the following equation here, uh, Y check is, um, the dual of y, for example, if y takes uh, y to x, then y dual y track takes uh, x dual to y dual. So x dual is uh, the, the dual variety, the, the, the Sayer dual of, uh, of x, and same for uh, similar similarly for y. Okay, you can check that this this um, this defines a Hermitian form, and. Um, uh, the special cycle ZX is a subformal scheme of the Rho zinc space where this row inverse uh, composed uh, with X deforms to an actual homomorphism. So this row is that row, uh, which is the last data of uh, the quadruple here. And uh, so this is just a framing map. And uh, so a priorily, this is just a quasi homomorphism on, on the special fiber. And then you require that it deforms to an actual homomorphism um, on the cycle. That's the definition of the cycle. Okay. So an important fact is that is, is in our case, it is not empty if and only if uh, um, the inner product of X is in ZP. Okay. And in general, it's in QP. So if it's not in ZP, then it's empty. And when it's uh, non empty, it is, probably, uh, it's, it is proved by Kula and Rubberboard in their first paper, I guess, that uh, this is a divider. And uh, so, this, uh, so this is the object on the, on the geometric side of the uh, Kula Rubberboard conjecture. And uh, I have to introduce the analytic side. So, the analytic side is um, local density. So, um, uh, L and M are Hermitian lattices. And so this representation uh, variety is actually a scheme. So it's R point is a set of um, R linear maps from L to M, which is isometric with respect to the um, corresponding, um, corresponding Hermitian matrix on L and M respectively. Okay, so uh, in some sense, M has to be larger than L in, this, in order that this is not empty. 
And uh, so local density is defined as this limit. So if you count uh, the mod p uh, to the nth, um, zp mod p to the nth um, points of this representation variety and uh, divided by p to the nth times the dimension of that variety. And you get a quantity that is well defined, that is the local density. And uh, I will denote by h the Hermitian lattice represented by the following matrix. So here I'm pretending that this quadratic field uh, comes from an imaginary. So this local field comes from an imaginary quadratic field whose uh, discriminant is this delta here. Okay. And so this, uh, so if you, you're in a unratified situation, then this matrix is actually equivalent to just uh, the identity matrix of rank two. Rank two. But if it, P is ramified, for example, then this will be the same as the identity matrix. Okay. And I define the um, local density polynomial to be uh, the local density um, from, um, from L to M plus uh, R copies of H. So here the variable is actually R, the number of copies of H. And uh, you can prove that that is a polynomial in um, in x, this is a change of variable if I take x to the p to the minus 2 r. Okay. So this is a polynomial with q coefficient. And uh, I define its um, derivative to be the negative derivative of this polynomial evaluated at x equal to 1. And uh, so uh, what does the cooler Ropower conjecture say? So it says that if I take um, a full rank uh, lattice of V, so, uh, the rank, and so the dimension of V is N. And uh, if, um, since then it is, fact, it is a fact that ZL is properly supported um, uh, on the Rappaport link space. Um, so ZL is actually um, an extension of ZX. For example, you just take the, the you, you just take the intersection of the Z, all the ZX1 up to ZXN, you get the L. And uh, so this in general will have to measure bigger than, the, than zero, the reduced low cuts uh, in the special fiber. So, so we want to uh, define an intersection number of these cycles. So I have to use a derived intersection. So you take the derived tensor of, um, of these structure sheets, and then you take the Euler class um, in the gross and deep, um, in the gross and deep group, and then you take uh, sorry, and then then you take the Euler characteristic. Okay, so that's a definition of um, the intersection number. Uh, if you're not so familiar with derived intersection, you can just uh, uh, you can think of it as like you can move um, the x one, the x n to general positions, so they actually intersect your points. But it's not always doable in the in the number field case. So you can. So that definition is actually um, not the right definition, but you can think of it that way if you're not familiar with the right intersection. And the kutler ropoport conjecture says that, um, so if I, uh, so this intersection number inter L, so I, I forgot to say that this intersection number depends only on L, uh, not on the actual basis it choose for L. So this is a result uh, by Ben Howard. Uh, First I, and first, I think it's by Terstegen and n equal to three case, okay? Um, and then, uh, so the conjecture says that intersecting number into L is um, equal to the normalized local, normalized derivative of local density, which is um, alpha prime L to the, uh, so you map L to I n and divided by alpha I n and I n, so I n, here just denotes that the, cell, the unique self dual lattice of rank n. So it is of, uh, of the opposite invariant of V. So here invariant just means the determinant of, an, of a moment matrix for this Hermitian lattice. Okay, so they have uh, the opposite, direct, opposite uh, determinant. So if you don't take the derivative, um, that value um, alpha L I n will be zero. Okay, so this is, so this is uh, compatible with the so-called incoherent zero series. And uh, so the global picture, so I just want to briefly, very briefly mention the global picture. Um, uh, 
So this is uh, the arithmetic theta theories pro uh, proposed by Steve. Um, so I, I do not uh, have the precise definition here because in general it is very, um, it is very complicated actually the, the definition. So here I only care about, so T it takes values in the N by N Hermitian matrices. And uh, here uh, in this talk, I actually only care about those positive definite Ts. Okay, so this uh, corresponding to the local conjecture uh, that uh, that is here. In, in other words, um, so um, the the conjecture of Kudla is actually this asthmatic theta series is uh, equal to the central derivative of of, of an incoherent Eisenstein series. Okay, and uh, so you can uh, equal the two equations and just take Fourier coefficients, and for those um, positive definite t, you take the Fourier, co Fourier coefficient and, and uh, equal the two sides, it, the, the conjecture actually will be a consequence of the previous local conjecture. In other words, this conjecture can be localized. And uh, so some previous work, um, so I steal this, uh, this term, three generations of theta series from one of Steve's talk. So uh, here is uh, so here I provide a link, or you can just Google um, arithmetic theta series. I think that that will be if you Google that and uh, choose video, that will be the first thing that pop up. And uh, so there are three generations. The first one is a classical one that is uh, studied by Jacobi and Ziga and Wei and many others. The second generation is the geometric um, theta series, which is on the on the generic fiber or complex points of, of the Shimura variety, which is studied by Kula and Nielsen. And the third um, is the arithmetic set of theories proposed by Steve and studied by many others. Okay. So the current status of the previous conjecture, so is, it is actually proved. So the case when n is equal to one not two or more generally, uh, non-degenerate intersection case, which means that uh, the, the special sexual special cycles actually intersect in points. Uh, so that case is tracked by Kula and Ruppelberg in their original paper. And, uh, and the three case is proved by Tostiga, and uh, that is already very, very technical. So this is um, pages of pages calculations using, for example, display theory. Okay. And the general case is proved by Li and Zhang using an ingenious argument of induction. And uh, so we already heard about one application of this uh, conjecture, which is the arithmetic inner product formula. And uh, in Charles' talk, uh, I guess yesterday. So this is um, so this so this shows that this KR conjecture is closely related to BSD conjecture and the more generally uh, Benson block conjecture. So um, that's the case for the good reduction. And uh, now we move on to uh, the ramified case. So uh, when P is ramified, um, there are basically two well understood models of Shimura varieties. Um, so one is exact smooth case and the other is a Kramer model. And unfortunately, this is not the same Kramer as our speaker and also in the audience, I guess. And uh, so the exotic smooth case so the difference is actually the polarization. The first case, the exact smooth case, the kernel of the polarization is the same as the kernel of iota pi. And uh, the second case, uh, the kernel is trivial. In other words, it's principal polarization. And uh, you can guess from the name that uh, the first case, um, in the first case, the corresponding um, Shimura variety or RD space is actually smooth. It has good reduction. And uh, in a recent paper by Li and Liu, the analog of KR conjecture in that case can be proved using the same strategy, uh, strategy as a Li and Zhang. Okay. Uh, um, so in this talk, we'll focus on the Kramer model instead, uh, which, um, which has bad reduction, only semi stable reduction. So, um, on the geometric side, is it is more already more complicated than the good reduction case, and the on the, on the analytic side, um, 
It turns out that you have to add correction terms to the derivative of local density in, in this case. So this is actually first discovered um, by um, Kula and Rappaport on their, on, in their paper on Shimura curves. So uh, uh, when, whenever bad reduction happens, you actually have to modify the analytic side by correction terms as well. But our case is like more general high-dimensional unitary uni Shimura variety, okay? And uh, so, um, so here is basically the same notation f over qp is quadratic extension, but he, now we assume this is um, this is uh, ramified instead of all ramified. And uh, so the RD space here is also um, defined basically using the same data, except that you have to, so you have this x, which is a p-divisional group, iota is an OF action, lambda is a principal polarization, rho is a framing map, and it has to satisfy the same signature condition. Um, but it turns out that, um, it turns out that the same the signature condition is uh, not enough to guarantee uh, that the model the RD space is flat. So in order to get flatness, we need to impose a Pappas condition. So that's that's why I put the upper script Pappas uh, on the space to indicate that I actually impose this condition. Uh, so this is a wedge condition. Alternatively, you can just understand that. Uh, this um, Pappas model, this Pappas RD space is just a flat closure of the generic fiber, um, of, the, of the generic fiber in a naive model I functor. Um, by naive, I mean without proposing the Pappas wedge condition here. Okay. Um, so that's flat closure. And uh, we have to do more to get a regular model. So the previous model is flat, but it has isolated singularity. Um, so blowing up these singularities, we get the model, so-called so -called the Kramer model. Um, so these super C special points, in other words, are the su these super special points are the singularities. They become exceptional divisors isomorphic to um, the, the n minus one dimensional projective space over a special fiber. So why is the Kramer model the right model to consider in this case? So we can think of it as a minimal model in some sense uh, for the Shimura variety. Um, so um, you have, so if, for example, you have a Shimura variety over the generic fiber. You want to extend it to, um, for example, ZP. So it has a minimal model uh, when n is equal to two. So in, act, in, in that case, there's a theory about a uh, uh, um, minimal arithmetic surface. So you have the same criterion, for example, you. Um, so this model has to be regular and it doesn't have a divisor which whose, uh, whose self intersection number is minus one. In that case, um, you have the, um, the surface you get is actually, the arithmetic surface you get is actually minimal. In other words, you cannot, um, uh, it, 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 it cannot uh, be blown down in some sense, okay? So um, that's the case when n is equal to two for any big R equal to three, I don't really know a precise meaning of this minimal model here. So maybe Michael Rupfordman knows, knows more about that. Um, so like the, the, like the Pappas model, the Kramer model has a nice moduli interpretation. So if you have this moduli interpretation, interpretation it is uh, more convenient to study the special cycles. Um, so, I want to mention that there are, for each dimension n, um, there are possibly two non-isomorphic RD space in this case. And this is different um, with the unramified case where for each dimension n, you have a unique um, a model of RD space. So in this case, uh, when n is even, you have two. And um, when n is odd, you actually have a unique RD space. Uh, so this corresponds to the similarity uh, class of Hermitian forms. So I will explain more in the next slide. So as before, you can define a vector space V um, that, that is equipped with a Hermitian form. So this is the same as um, the unramified case. I won't go over that again. And um, 
you choose a lattice L in that space V of full rank. And uh, you can define a special cycle. So if for a single vector X in V, um, so this, the definition of the special cycle is the same as before as well. So it is a subscreen where a certain quasi isomorph, a quasi homomorphism deforms from an actual homomorphism. So as it is, um, again, it is non empty if and only if X uh, inner product was X as in ZP. So in this case, um, it is also a divisor. Um, this is proved by Ben Howard. And uh, similarly, we can define um, uh, the Pappas model of the divisor. So this is, the definition is, is the same, uh, just, the, just that the ambient space is uh, the Pappas um, Rappaport link space instead of the Kramer Rappaport link space. So here, um, so here is another reason that the Kramer model is nice. The reason is that um, the, the, the special cycle, the special cycle for a single vector is actually, actually a divisor. Okay, so this is very convenient for a lot of reasons. For example, if uh, you can just derive the intersection number as before using our um, derived intersection. And, uh, but the payoff is that, um, so, the, so the special cycle or special divisor will always contain some exceptional divisors. And uh, if their intersection is non-empty, um, they will always have some common exceptional divisor. So in other words, the reduced locus of the intersection will always be dimension n minus one. Okay, so this is so. Uh, so in some sense, you can never be um, your expected dimension, which is zero. So you have to use this derived intersection to derive and to to uh, to define the space. Okay, so now I can talk about. Um, our conjecture. So the first guess of the conjecture is that you just um, do the same thing as the unramified case. So um, that M be the unique unimodular Hermitian lattice uh, of rank N whose invariant is the opposite of V. And then you just define the, so the first guess of the conjecture is that the intersection number is um, two times the normalized um, derivative of local density, which is alpha prime L, L to the M and R over alpha M to M. So this two is actually the ramification of X. So this two comes from some global calculation. So we, this will show up naturally there, okay? Um, but this will not be the correct, uh, correct conjecture for the reason that, um, for the reason is following. So if L is not integral, we can see that this special cycle is empty. This is the same as, unramified, as in the unramified case as well. So this implies that the intersection number will be zero. And uh, on the other hand, um, the local, local density polynomial will no longer be zero. Um, so the in, remember in the unramified case, H, this, uh, H is a hyper, hyperplane is, um, is isomet isometric to the, to the identity matrix of rank two. So in other words, its um, valuation is zero. And uh, in, in this ramified case, the, the valuation of H will no longer be zero, it will be, it will be minus one. So if you put this into M, uh, you get a polynomial. Uh, so if, for example, L also contains some copies of H, then this value will not be zero, okay? So, and it won't be zero when you take the derivative in general as well. So in other words, you have the left hand side, which is zero, but the right hand side is not zero. So they cannot match. And uh, the idea to make the correction is actually very simple. I consider the following uh, linear combination of things. So here I add n minus one terms. So these n minus one terms um, so this mi is um, the Hermitian lattice of the form. So it takes h to some copies, um, and then you add by a unimodular modular Hermitian lattice, and uh, so so that you guarantee that m, m, mi has has rank n as well. And uh, so for each 
for each uh, number of copies of H, there are two possible choice of MI according to the determinant of the uni modular Hermitian flux. Okay, so in general, so in total, so the, the dimension jump by two every time. And for each dimension, you have two choices. So in, in total, we have n minus one choices of mi. So that have exhausted all the choices up to equivalence. And uh, so these are my correction terms. I put alpha uh, of L to mi there. And I have to, uh, I have to add a coefficient ci in front of it. So how to uh, get the correct coefficient? So I simply plugging L by M one of the matrices uh, MJ, okay? And I require that, um, that um, the whole thing to be zero. Remember, um, MJ, is not, uh, MJ is not integral. So inter intersection number of MJ will be zero. So I require this thing to be zero as well. So this is um, rank N minus one linear system. And its coefficient matrix is this coefficient, uh, is this coefficient in matrix is very interesting. This is this alpha MJMI matrix. Uh, this is upper triangular. Why? Because you have a hierarchy of uh, Hermitian lattices. The more copies you have, the more um, copies of H you have, the bigger the lattice is. And you cannot have a Hermitian embedding from a bigger lattice into a smaller lattice. Okay, so that's, so, so that's why the the, the, the matrix is actually upper triangular. And uh, the, the diagonal terms are self-representation self numbers, so that will never be zero. So you have a diagonal matrix with non-zero, sorry, I should say with non-zero diagonal entries. So that is, sing, uh, is non-singular. So this linear system has a unique solution. That gives you the coefficient ci. So now the modified conjecture is that um, I, um, I replace the, the naive uh, normalized, uh, normalized derivative of local density by this corrected, um, uh, corrected uh, derivative of local density, where the CI is um, the solution to the previous uh, linear system. Okay? And you put it this way, it will satisfy the property that Whenever L is uh, not integral, the right-hand side will also be um, zero automatically. Okay, and uh, so this is our conjecture, and uh, so main results up to now. So n uh, n equal to one case, I just leave it as an exercise for you, and uh, n equal to two case. So remember that for each dimension, for for it, when n is even. There are two possible choices of uh, RD space that correspond to the determinant of this uh, um, of this Hermitian form on, on V. So when V is anisotropic, uh, this is a result by myself. Um, um, when and V is isotropic, this is joint work with Kyoko and Tonghaiyang, and, uh, and the same authors uh, proved uh, the conjecture for n equals three. Okay, so see, um, now I will start to talk about, uh, start to talk about the proofs. So when, uh, when uh, before, is before you do the two, proof, uh, maybe one naive question is, do you have a closed formula for these CIs in general or only? Uh, that's a very formula? good question. So it is, um, it is actually quite, quite hard to get a closed formula in general because this, this coefficient matrix alpha and JMI is very easy to compute. This, this is just by counting some, counting some, uh, counting some things in the in the finite field case. Uh, but the problem is that this uh, derivative alpha prime, um, alpha prime and JM is um, at least as we we can see now is not so easy to compute. So we have a recursive formula whose um, complexity is like two to the n. So. When so the, in, in some sense it is not a close one, but it it, um, it is easy to see that uh, the solution exists and it is unique for the for the CI. Okay, so um, so let me talk about the proof when um, so when n equals to two. So this is just by computing both sides explicitly. 
So when V is an isotropic, um, so this ruppable zinc space is isomorphic to a looping tape space uh, with level structure. Uh, so this is a result of uh, ruppable three three and uh, so the proof of A just use uh, you can decompose the special cycles into some quasi canonical lifting cycles, and then compute their intersection number explicitly. And what, when V is isotropic, um, uh, the RZ space is really um, um, equal to the formal completion of the periodic half upper uh, uh, periodic half space of Greenfield. So in the proof of um, of, the, of that case, actually, I uh, use gross and messing theory to write down the equation of the special cycle expression. So now I want to talk about n equal to three case. Um, so first, I introduce. Um, I want to introduce um, the vertex vertex lattice is here. So um, a vertex lattice and is a four rank OF lattice in the in the vector space V. So so V sharp is its Hermitian dual. So we say that this vertex lattice is uh, this lattice is vertex lattice if a, v, a pi lambda is in lambda sharp and is containing lambda itself. And uh, so there's a notion of type of lambda. So this is just uh, the dimension of uh, lambda over lambda sharp as an FP space. And can I ask, can I ask about this n equals to two? Yes, space? yes. Can you go back one? Yes. Right. I mean, here you're talking about the Papa's model, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but actually, you're talking, you're supposed to talk about the Kramer model. Right. Yes, right. So you have to blow the after singularity. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I mean, because I think, Steve, uh, didn't we do gamma zero of P with the usual definition? And then these uh, do, this is not a divisor, right? It has embedded components. Yes, right, right. It's not a divisor. Uh -huh. So what, but uh, when you blow up, you get divisors. That, yeah, right. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But still, I mean, to calculate this intersection, I think we failed, right? Steve? I think so. You're, you're in, muted. In which model? And on this Papa's model. Okay. Okay, just a remark. Okay, thanks. Uh, oh, we actually calculate the uh, Kramer model. He say that this is easier to say in the uh, space. The device actually calculated that in the Kramer model. Okay. okay. So is the space defined over the quadratic field, or I mean, there's a base change Rami fed. Yes, yes, it is. That's a very good question. It is defined over the quadratic field because you have to remember in. This actually shows something in Ben's talk as well. We have to tensor with n zero one, um, and that is defined over the quadratic field. And uh, n one one is defined over the rational field. But if you tensor that, you have to, in order to have a definition of the special cycle, you have to tensor with n zero one, which is only defined over the quadratic field. I see. Yeah, I think that makes a difference, right? Yes, yes. Uh, if you if it's defined over the rational numbers, then this model is actually regular. This Papa's model is already regular. But if you take this ramified base change, it becomes irregular. And you, you right, you have to blow out. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, so let me go back to the n equal to three case. So um, in that case, a vertex lattice is of type zero or two. And uh, so the picture is the, the picture of the Bruja Tis building looks like if uh, every type two lattices contains exactly p plus one type zero lattices, and every type zero lattice is containing exactly p plus one type two lattices. Okay, and um, so the so the reduced locus in some sense is due to the Bruja Tis tree. So. Um, Every um, type two lattice corresponds to a projective line, which I denoted by v lambda two. So lambda two, the 
the index two here indicates that it's of type two. And so V lambda two is just a projective line. It contains P plus one super special points, each of which correspond to a type zero lattice. And you can blow these type zero lattices. So each type zero lattice um, actually uh, um, can be blown up to a, to a divisor. So, and okay, so this is, and I also denote by H lambda zero, um, a hyperbola in the in the exceptional divisor, except um, in the an exceptional divisor correspond to uh, correspond to lambda zero. And uh, so I, I want to talk about some basic fact um, about exceptional divisors. So um, uh, we can define the the strict transform of this uh, cycle in the Pappas model. Uh, with respect to the blow up um, of, of the Kramer model. Okay, uh, strict transform just means that originally you have a special cycle that is defined. Uh, so Z pop X is a subformal scheme of, uh, M, uh, of the Pappas model. And then you blow it up and then you, you throw away um, the exceptional divisors. Then you get the strict transform. That's just an intuitive way of explaining it. Um, then, um, so if X is, uh, the inner product of X is a unit in ZP, then this uh, D tilde X, the strict transform will be actually isomorphic to the N minus one Kramer model, N minus one dimensional Kramer model. Uh, in other words, there's a closing back from the Kramer model, uh, from the N minus one dimensional Kramer model to the rank N Kramer model. Okay, and uh, so you can you can relate the the actual special divisor to the strict transform very easily by the following equation. So if lambda is a type zero lattice, then m lambda x will be the largest integer m such that pi to the minus m times x is in lambda. And then then you can compute the multiplicity of the exceptional divisor. Um, so it is just m lambda x plus one. And uh, you can also compute the intersection of the tilde x with the exceptional divisor. Uh, so the bracket here just means that I take, I think of it as an element in the child group of, um, of the exceptional divisor. And that is equal to uh, two m plus one copies of, um, of h lambda, where h lambda is a hyperplane in the exceptional divisor. Okay, so, so this, this can be, why do I put these two facts together? Because the second fact can be implied by the first fact by, by induction. And then you, you basically very quickly reduce to, to the case when n is equal to two. And then you can check these facts very uh, explicitly. Then uh, I want to introduce a new notion, which is called the difference cycle. So the difference, what is a difference cycle? It is, uh, so I define, uh, the derived version of the special cycle as an element in the K group by uh, using this derived tensor and uh, take um, uh, the alternating sum as an element in the Rosenberg group. And then, so this is just a derived version um, of this cycle where we actually use it to define intersection numbers as well. And then this different cycle is this a linear combination of um, our special cycle. So here um, we, we basically add the special cycle Z equal L um, by, um, a linear, by a linear um, combination of some hack operator actions. So here L G inverse is a lattice that is sl slightly larger than L. So the L G inverse quotient by L is actually an FP vector space. So it is slightly larger. So, um, so the, the general definition I want to, I don't, I don't want to spend time to read the general definition out. I just want to show you some examples. Uh, when M equal to one, this difference divisor, this is so everything is a divisor. So this difference divisor is studied by Terstiga. And he showed that uh, this dif difference divisor in the, in the unramified cases are actually regular and irreducible. 
And uh, so this is just uh, the definition is just uh, the definition just reduced to the uh, to the x minus the x over pi. Okay. And uh, so the, the most interesting case to us is when m is equal to m minus one. Uh, so, so when m is equal to three and m is equal to two, uh, we have the following uh, more concrete uh, description of the difference, the, uh, difference cycle. So this is just a ZL minus uh, summation over L prime. So L prime is um, um, proper, uh, properly, properly contains L and is properly containing pi, one over pi of L, okay? And then, you, and then the last term is just P times um, the divisor Z um, of one over pi L. And uh, in the above case, if uh, in other words, when n is equal to three and n equal to two, if we assume that um, pi divides the inner product matrix LL, then you can show that um, this difference, uh, difference cycle is uh, the following uh, linear combination. So it is a double summation. So in, in the inner uh, in, in the bracket is uh, two V lambda two, where, so remember that uh, when lambda two is a vertex lattice of type two, uh, it corresponds to a projective line. And that pro projective line is denoted by V lambda two. And uh, um, so lambda, so, so here the inner summation is over all the type zero lattices containing lam lambda two. So there are P, minus, P plus one of them. So there are P plus one lambda zero and each lambda zero correspond to you have an H lambda zero, which is a projective line in the exceptional divisor. And you sum over all the lambda two that is in, in the bruja tree of the special cycle. In other words, um, V lambda two is contained, the whole thing is contained um, in the special cycle. So, um, so this is actually, um, so you can see that the multiplicity Multiplicity is very low and it's quite uniform. Um, so if you don't um, take the difference divisor, or you don't take the difference cycle, you just take the original ZL, then its multiplicity is very complicated, right? Um, but if you take this, you get a very uniform and simple multiplicity for each uh, V lambda two and H lambda zero. So we prove the above by just intersecting this difference cycle with uh, the tilde y zero, where remember this z tilde y zero is a strict transform of um, the special cycle in the Pappas model. And uh, we require that y zero um, perb to be anisotropic. So y zero perb is um, of, of, of dimension two, we require it to, it to be anisotropic. So by intersecting that, um, and also intersecting some exceptional divisors, and you can show this multiplicity formula. And an interesting fact is that all horizontal cycles in this case cancel out. So you know, the horizontal cycles can be pretty much described in the same way as, as a paper of Lee and Trial. And uh, um, if you take this difference cycle, and then it's, it's actually a version of like, inclusion exclusion principle that all these cycles cancel out with each other. So they, they don't show up in this. Uh, unless um, the lattice L is small so that the lattice L already give you, itself gives you a horizontal cycle. But uh, under our assumption, we assume that pi divides in the inner product of L with itself. So that is ex excluded, okay? Um, but so does this also mean that P kills the structure sheet on the left side? P kills the structure oh, pi, sheet. Pi, pi kills the structure sheet? Yes, yes. Right, because on the right hand side, these live all. Yeah, 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 in characteristic. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, everything is uh, supported on special fiber on the right, after, on the right hand side. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so then we can um, prove by induction on evaluation. So um, I haven't explained the, the, the definition of evaluation of L. So basically L is a Hermitian lattice. You take 
uh, any, basis, any basis of the Hermitian lattice and you get a moment matrix uh, of rank two by two. And then you, for example, you can assume it is diagonalized and then the diagonal elements are of the form of a unit times pi to the sum power. You take, um, um, you can take the sum of those powers or you can take each individual power as, as, um, and as a vector of in, uh, integral numbers. So, um, so induction from, starts from the basic cases, which essentially reduces to a case when n equal to two, which we, are, we already pr proved before. Um, and then it suffices to show that um, this um, difference cycle intersect with um, the X is some certain primitive local density. So here, primitive and local density. So you have an upper, upper script two here. It means that um, the image of L in M um, reduced modulo pi still has rank two. That's the definition of this primitive local density. Okay. And it is a result by Kitauka and Katsurada that uh, that primitive length density is actually um, a linear combination of local densities. So here, this linear combination is exactly the same linear combination uh, as we as before when we sorry when we when we define the special when we define the difference cycle. So in fact, our definition um, of the difference cycle is motivated by this um, by this result of Kitauga and Katsurada to express primitive local densities um, as linear combinations of some. Um, hack operators combination of local densities. Okay. So um, um, the punchline is that a primitive local density is much easier to compute than the general local density. And also um, on the left hand side, we know that um, the the difference divisor that, that um, is very easy to compute. We know it's explicitly explicitly is decomposition. Okay, so, uh, so this is um, the um, uh, induction step that you just have to equal the different cycle uh, with the primitive local density. Um, so if you want to add everything together, like um, to get an actual expression for, um, for example, alpha L plus XM, that's actually very complicated. Okay, so this actually simplifies the calculation. Now, um, so this basically finished the proof when n is equal to three. Um, so I want to explain why um, the n Jones method cannot be um, directly applied to our situation here. Okay, this is because of this failure of local modularity. So well, when, uh, I think the key ingredient in the proof uh, of the undrawn uh, for the for the for the unramified case of KR conjecture is this local modularity result that they discovered. Um, so we say a function is modular if um, it is equal to its min. Uh, so f x is equal to minus of f hat x, where f hat x is a Fourier transform. Okay, you think of it as a so x is a vector in V, so you think of it as a function in V. So it has a Fourier transform. Um, and then you have these individual pieces of, um, of the vertical part of the intersection number, which is defined by V lambda two. Remember V lambda two is a projective line uh, on, on special fiber and you, you intersect it with the X. You got this, um, this function uh, denoted by intersection lambda two X. So it turns out that this is very simple. This is just a one lambda two x. So, so, so this is just a characteristic function of the vertex lat lattice lambda two. Uh, you can similarly, so here the difference is that we also have uh, exceptional dividers, uh, which is not uh, present in the unramified case. So um, you, for uh, these exceptional divisors, you have to consider, you have to compute the P1 in that exceptional divisor uh, intersect with this dx, okay? And it turns out that uh, the formula is minus the characteristic function of lambda zero. So, so you can already see that this failure, this mod local modularity fails when n is equal to two. Um, the funny thing is 
we actually have two versions of relevant Fourier transform here. And uh, for one version of the Fourier transform, uh, the characteristic function of lambda two is uh, modular and the characteristic function of lambda zero is not. And for the other version, it's reversed. One for the characteristic function of lambda two is not modular, but the characteristic function of lambda two, uh, of uh, lambda zero is modular. So this two versions corresponding to taking um, dual lattice uh, in terms of orthogonal dual lattice or Hermitian dual lattice. Okay, so the uh, the so the Hermitian dual lattice of lambda zero is equal to itself, and the orthogonal dual lattice of, of lambda two is equal to itself. But um, nevertheless, they cannot both be equal to itself. Okay, so so this is a key ingredient in the proof of um, this KR conjecture in the unramified case, but this doesn't hold in our situation. So this means that uh, the method of Li and Zhang does not directly apply. So we have to work hard. Um, so we are still attempting to do this in the general case, but uh, at this point, it still seems out of reach. Okay. And uh, so this is the end of my um, talk. And uh, happy birthday, Steve. And thank you all for being here for the talk. All right. Let's let's thank you, Shane, for a very nice talk. And now, are there any comments or questions for him? For, for the for the local modularity, I mean, here your pi modular lattice. Uh, sorry, the unimodular lattice is not. It's a characteristic function does not satisfy this property, so it's. I mean, it's not a reasonable to actually expect this to be true anyway, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, right. right. So in other words, whatever this invariance probably uh, for, for the pi, uh, for the unimodular lattice, uh, whatever, you know, probably uh, for the this function under the way representation should tell you how to modify, uh, how to modify this property. Here. Yeah, so, right, we we try to think about this, but... Uh -huh. Okay, it's not a, that, right, that vector is not a invariant one, so that's the problem. So it's a, some kind of a twist to the invariancy, maybe. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry, can you say it again? So, I mean, that vector, uh, that, that function, right, the characteristic function for the mm -hmm. unimodular lattice mm -hmm. under way representation, it, it's, maybe it's a you are horrible. Vector, you are already invariant. Uh, yeah, I haven't thought about it. Uh, so under, for example, U one one action, what it is. Um, I I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Yeah. So, but we, uh, that's a good point. We should, uh, we should study like how the action works here. Yes. Right. Yeah, how the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's the representation generated by, by yeah, the yeah, vector yeah. under yes, variable? Yes. yes, yes, right. And we also like to see where, whether this kind of condition of modularity can be losing to uh, still can use uncertain principle. We try to figure that out too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right, yeah, this looks more, more difficult. I mean, it's a uh, ramification, serious ramification here. All right, do we have any more questions or comments for you, Shang? If not, then... Um... Well, if not, let me, let me just say, yes. I wanna thank, first of all, the 